We're here at Hermes Construction Company in Florence. We're going to meet Tyson Hermes. He's a father, he's a beekeeper, he's a painter, he's a fisher, he's mayor of Erlanger. Tyson is a regular Renaissance man of Northern Kentucky. Let's hear Tyson's story today on People of Northern Kentucky. Welcome to People in Northern Kentucky, Tyson. And um, so did you grow up in this area? I grew up on the other side of the ocean in uh, Delhi. What? <laughs> I see yeah, over on the yeah. west side of Cincinnati. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So uh, tell me a little bit about your background and your uh, education, what schools you went to. Uh, okay. Um, I went to the University of Cincinnati and uh, have a degree in um, architectural engineering and construction management. And um, also have an associate's degree in civil engineering. Wow. And um, uh, I went to Covington Latin for high school. And uh, prior to that, I went to St. Dominic's in Delhi. So you have children, right? Can you yes. tell us a little bit about your family? Um, married to Julie and have three kids. Jonah is 15, Elise is 13, and Zane is 11. And um, Jonah and Elise go to Covington Latin School, mm -hmm. and Zane is at Turkey Foot Middle School. Obviously, Hermes Construction is a family business, Tyson Hermes. Yes. So can you tell me how that started? Uh, in 1995, Eric started the company. Eric is my brother. And um, it was kind of a branch of my father's company. Um, my dad is an architect. And um, in the late 70s, uh, there really wasn't a market for custom architecture, custom buildings, custom homes. And um, so he began to try to find another way to put food on the table and got involved in self-storage and um, began to, to design, build, develop the property um, and then manage the self-storage facilities. And my brother helped him with that uh, for quite a few years. And um, in 1995 then, um, Eric had laid out the, the next uh, development in front of my dad. My dad said, "You know what? That's that's enough. I we've we've got we've built too much." Or, or, how did he say that? Um, felt like he had he had built built enough and, and just wanted to um, manage what he had instead of growing the company any further. And Eric said, "Well, what what he loved was the development part of it, and building, and so he started Hermes Construction and began to do it for other people." And, um, and eventually split apart from my dad's company, Ari Hermes, uh, completely. And, um, and I joined Eric in 2002. And um, the, the company was primarily self-storage, construction, and development. And then we began to do more general contracting and other construction when I joined. So. Now we do churches and offices and warehouses and restaurants and all kinds of. You start them from scratch, or mm -hmm. okay? Yeah, I mean, some of them are brand new buildings. Uh, some are um, additions onto existing buildings. Some are renovations, but yeah, it's all commercial. So, so okay. we we don't we don't do any uh, residential construction. So what made you decide to add to your busy life of running a company and father of three kids to be mayor of Erlanger also? Right. <laughs> it's like something snapped. <laughs> I don't know. Um, you know, I think the big thing was that uh, what, what I guess I got a little bit frustrated and um, maybe I complained more about politics and, and government then I realized uh, until one day my wife finally said, you know what, you just need to get involved. And I said, you know what, you're right, I do. And so what I was watching uh, with the city of Erlanger was um, 
they continued raising their property tax rates year after year after year. So there's this dirty little thing called the compensating rate increase. Um, the state of Kentucky says that a city has to collect the same amount of taxes every year, plus or minus 2%. And when it was initially created, the purpose was that if a city had a large spike in the increase of their revenue, that they had to lower the tax rate. But by the time it be became a law, they said it could go both ways. So if the city's revenues continue to decrease, they can also continue to raise the tax rate in order to be able to collect the same amount. Well, in the city of Erlanger, they had been doing that for about 12 years straight. The, the revenue was continuing to decrease and they kept raising the property tax rate just to be able to collect the same amount each year. And that's where I, would, I continued to complain, I guess, to my wife and said, um, you know, there's another way. I mean, there's a better way. You don't have to keep raising the rate to try to collect the same amount. You try to make a bigger pie. Um, try to increase the property values, um, lower the tax rate, bring in more businesses. And at that time, um, you know, during the course of the campaign, Toyota had announced that they were leaving. So the largest employer in the city of Erlanger was on its way out. Um, if you drove up and down Dixie Highway, there were a lot of empty storefronts. And, um, you know, so we made it our focus to try to fill those storefronts, bring in more business, more development. Um, we've even grown the, um, the boundaries of the city to incorporate into it some additional um, neighborhoods in our layer, and that all helps. And so we've, we've decreased the um, property tax rate for two years straight now. Very proud of that. Very yeah, proud great. of our council for deciding that. Yeah. Um, and as a result, too, we've seen that our property, um, excuse me, not our property, but we've seen our occupational licenses uh, increase. We've seen our, the, and, the, and the collections on the um, payroll taxes have gone up by almost $100,000. Wow. Yeah, so. It's helped. It's helped already. It sounds like you've already helped yeah. the situation. Yeah. What do you find to be the most difficult thing about being mayor? Oh, I think it's definitely juggling the time. Mm. Um, someone had told me once I had been elected that I had needed to be very careful about the time with uh, the elected position. It's kind of like a vacuum. As much space or as much time as you let it take, it'll take every bit of it. And so it does, and it's a, it's a part-time position. Um, so I still have a regular job, and, um, but the part-time position still takes about between 35 and 45 hours each week. And that's, some of that's um, fun stuff, you know, but it's a lot of night meetings. It's meetings on the weekends and things like that, but there's fun stuff too. I mean, I count the time in going to the grade school and reading to the kids or, um, ribbon cutting ceremonies, I count that all as, as the time. So some of it's fun. And at least your wife can't complain because she's no. the one that told you no. <laughs> do something about it. I yeah, I so that. That's yeah. right, that's right. So add to all these things, I hear you're also a beekeeper. Yes. So tell me, why do you keep bees? What are the reasons and how did you get started on that? Uh, well, I'd always been interested in it. And about eight years ago, I had a, uh, one of my father's cousins, um, she had bees. It was really her husband, that she, so she was widowed. And she wasn't really uh, comfortable with taking care of them, and she was learning about it, and her son was helping her as well. And um, so he had asked for help one evening in moving a hive. And I thought, oh, this is a good way. I'd been already starting to read about them a little bit and starting to try to get to know about bees and beekeeping. And I uh, went over to help him move this hive a couple of miles down the road. And I was hooked from that point on. You know, it was just amazing to me. They were all kind of blocked inside. And you, you move them at night, typically, because uh, they're all in there. 
and uh, we strapped it all together and moved it and they were so angry when we set them and they um, uh, I, it was just this you know the, the feeling of putting your hand on top of that hive and it almost feels like putting your hood on the engine of a or on the hood of a running car you know just that vibration oh man there's a lot going on in there so yeah I got more and more interested in it and um, it just decided to go ahead and dive into it got involved with a group uh, out in southeast Indiana um, and they uh, a, a very giving group Southeast Indiana Beekeepers Association and um, one of the gentlemen there started catching swarms and giving them to me and uh, that kind of got me started so as a beekeeper you talked about swarms have you had to uh, uh, take down a swarm yeah, I've learned how to do it, and I've done it quite a few times since then. So, yeah. awesome. I've seen photos of you um, in the school system talking to kids about the bees. I so. have, recently for the first time. Huh? I went to the Northern Kentucky Montessori School and was talking to them, and that was a lot of fun. The questions that they come up with and the things that they're, the way their minds operate, they're like, wow, that is really incredible. It's amazing. Well, like I said, I called you a renaissance man earlier because you do so many things, and I heard you also have been a ski instructor at oh, Perfect North. Yeah, I still am, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, so in the winters, I, uh, I instruct. So it's about three months of the year. Uh, I'll work out there a few nights a week and instruct. This was my 20, 22nd year doing it. 22nd? Yeah. Wow. So you started when you were a little kid, right, Tyson? <laughs> right, right. What other things do you do for fun? I love hiking with our family. You know, just a uh, walk in the woods is always a great thing. I love that. Um, in the winters, I will, uh, when I'm not, you know, actively working on the bees, um, I enjoy building the equipment, the wood equipment, and painting it, and uh, then also making wax uh, candles, beeswax candles. Um, so do that as well, and um, get it. I've gotten a little bit into winemaking as well. That's I enjoy that. Um, but I, think uh, I even saw painting, right? Oh yeah, painting. painting. Yeah, and I haven't painted as much as I would love to, but. Uh, but yeah, once in a while. Start dabbling in that. Yeah. yeah. And I think I saw a photo of you fishing. Oh yeah. Is this another thing you do for relaxation? Yes, maybe? that's a summer. Yeah, it's usually like one weekend of summer we'll, yeah. we'll go fishing. Yeah. And you it's sound like a fun dad. Like guy, guy's weekend usually, <laughs> oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. <laughs> so you've been here for a good part of your life. So what are your favorite things about Northern Kentucky? I love the area. I mean, the the the, the green rolling hills. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think is always a beautiful thing. If you ever travel away from northern Kentucky, you know this region. When you come back, that's always something that's so welcoming. I love that we have all four seasons here, and none of them are too extreme. You know, that's a that's a beautiful thing. Um, I love the. Uh, the, the whole culture in Northern Kentucky. You know, I heard somebody say it recently, uh, the people from Toyota, like it, some of the, the men from, or some of the people from Japan loved coming here because they talked about the um, horses, the hoops, and the hooch. So I mean, you know, bourbon, <laughs> the, uh, the uh, yeah, Northern Kentucky basketball, or there Kentucky you know. basketball, yeah. and, uh, and, and horse racing. So yeah, that's all. Yep. that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Is there anything you would like to say directly to the people of Northern Kentucky? I think one of the greatest things, especially for this area, I mean, we are, we're set for great prosperity in this area. I mean, we're, we're just, we're right on the verge of, of things really igniting in this area. There's so much great thing, and so many great things happening, and I feel like we are um, a great example here of everything that makes America such an exceptional country. I always remember the um, you know the things that I think about that make America so exceptional are the things that you see on our coins every day, you know, um, in 
God we trust. You know, we've got uh, uh, Greek Judeo-Christian values here. Uh, uh, there's church and God all play a strong part in everything. Uh, many of the people in the area, for, for many of the people in the area, uh, liberty. You know, we, just not forgetting that. We need to continue that entrepreneurial spirit and, and, and make sure we take advantage of, of the uh, systems that have been set up by our forefathers. And e um, pluribus unum. You know, so working together, we can, uh, you know, out of, out of many becomes one. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's why I love the area and, and uh, keep it up. Yep. Thank you for joining us today. Every Thursday at 10 a.m., get to know your neighbor by catching a new edition of People of Northern Kentucky.